why talk about science? In some ways, I feel like I'm going to be teaching skeptics to some degree, so I'm sure you all know a lot about science. Um, but one of the other directors on the, the board of the Bay Area Skeptics, uh, I won't mention his name at all, he um, asked me a few questions recently to skeptics in the public. He was uh, asking me some pretty basic questions, I thought they were anyway, about science. And that made me think, well, if there are skeptics out there who don't know too much about scientists, then I think that puts the public uh, in general at risk. It makes them susceptible to one of the dangerous claims that uh, scientists make. So, aside from the fact that I was told I was going to be talking about science. <coughs> so, why should I talk about scientists? Uh, I think in many ways I've seen more scientists than believers have over the years. Uh, the past 14 years I've been investigating paranormal and pseudoscientific scientific claims. Uh, so I've seen a stack of psychics in my time, all different kinds, and we'll be running through some of the different types of psychics today that I've seen. Uh, I even did an investigation into a company called Absolutely Psychic, if any of you have heard of that group before. Uh, I applied for a job as a, a psychic with them and was went through a process, an application process. I had to do readings, chat room readings, telephone readings, and I was offered a job as a psychic. So apparently I am a psychic according to their standards, but they claim that they uh, only offer work to 100% of applicants, the very best psychics. So I'm one of the very best psychics. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to be talking to you about psychics today. Um, so what, what is a psychic? I want to talk for a definition, so I know that Jean has already covered this territory in boring definitions. Uh, it is a, a foundation thing to do, and I'm a semanticist by trade, so excuse me while I indulge myself here. But what is a psychic? I wanted to look up not the Oxford English Dictionary, because not all of us have access to, to the OED. Instead, we're going to look up something like the American Heritage Dictionary instead. And uh, I must say as well that the, the whole point of these breakout sessions, so I'm going backwards a bit here, is to facilitate discussion. So if any, at any time, if you want to treat this like a classroom, if you want to interject or interrupt or get it, please do. I want everyone to get involved. I want this to be interactive. So we'll go back to a definition of psychic. Uh, American heritage, if you look up the word online, then I think the first dictionaries that come up will be Webster and uh, the American Heritage Dictionary. So they've given two, they've had two stabs here at a definition. The first is a person apparently responsive to psychic forces. So I don't like that definition because it's circular. It's really using the word that you're trying to define to define that word. Uh, and secondly, we've got a second definition, which is medium. So they're presupposing that it's, it's synonymous with psychic. And we're going to discuss that shortly. Uh, and I wouldn't say that medium and psychic are exactly the same thing. I think. Uh, uh, they're, they're not interchangeable terms as such. It's sort of like uh, you know, whiskey, bourbon, whiskey. All, all bourbons are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are bourbon. So I think all mediums are psychic, not all psychics are mediums. So then we'll look at the Cambridge Dictionaries Online. Uh, their definition, a person who has a special mental ability, for example, being able to know what will happen in the future or what people are thinking. So what do you think the problem is here? If anyone wants to scream out the I can do that. Yes? I can do that. Please? So that anyone can do it. Yeah, so I'm going to rise tomorrow and tomorrow and what So this presupposes really that uh, these abilities exist. So I'm not happy with that definition. Then we can look at, uh, I did an interview for the point of inquiry recently with Bob Carroll. I'm sure everyone has used the Skeptics Dictionary. Uh, it's a fantastic resource online. So his definition here, and I'm really underselling him, uh, this is just the first couple of lines from his definition, and it's more of an encyclopedic definition, so if you visit the site, uh, you'll come across a lot more information than what I'm providing here, so I'm, I'm being unfair to him. But he said, as a noun, psychic refers to a medium or a person who has paranormal powers. So my problem with this definition is that, uh, once again, he's used medium to define psychic, and I think they are interchangeable, they're not the same thing. And a person who has paranormal powers, then that could be that I become invisible or something like that. Uh, that's not necessarily the kind of uh, definition that, that really is precise. So here's my working definition. And uh, I'm sure after, after everything I've said, Pope falls through this. And it's through the English spelling as well. Do pencil, I'm not pleased with that. So I'm sure you can poke holes through this definition. It's not precise, but it is the best way I can cobble to 
together at the time without me doing over 11,000 words uh, analysis of psyche. So person who claims to have various abilities of sensory perceptions, I haven't said ESP, that's something more specific. Uh, extending beyond the normal range, these alleged paranormal powers, I think that's an important point there to, uh, to actually question the validity of this, to use the term like alleged or supposed or claims. Uh, so these alleged paranormal powers typically include mental telepathy. Uh, so that's mind reading. Knowledge of past and present events unknowable to the claimant, although that's a bit clunky. Some people call that retrocognition nowadays, so there's a phrase for everything in this industry. And the ability to predict future events, so that's precognition. So when is a psychic not a psychic? When a psychic is an intuitive or a sensitive or a clairvoyant or all these other terms. So in many ways, these are all uh, labels for the same concept. But at the same time, I think that the claims are changing, the psychic's claims are changing. Uh, I did a, a ghost investigation with a group of very uh, uncritical people a couple of years ago. And uh, I was just speaking with one of the psychics there. I happened to refer to her in the course of the conversation as a psychic, and she said, I'm not a psychic, I'm an intuitive. <laughs> so <laughs> they do. <laughs> what, what I think they're doing here is I think they're, the claims are evolving, uh, and they're claiming now that this is a power that everyone has. We've all got the ability to be psychic, and uh, this is a faculty that we need to develop. So psychics claim that their ability is more developed than others. Uh, so they, they'll refer to terms like intuition and gut feelings and common sense and hunches. So they're claiming in some ways that their abilities aren't paranormal, but something that we've all got an, an undiscovered sense, if you will. So uh, if you only follow my name, skeptic column with uh, CSI, I treat this issue in that uh, particular uh, article there. So. Let's look at uh, some of the main labels and categories that uh, psychics are using now, some of their specific claims. Um, so there's a lot of crossover, I think, with all of these terms. So medium, so this is, a, a, as I would say, a specific kind of psychic. So often mediums will call themselves psychic mediums. And uh, these are a specific kind of psychic who believe that they're sensitive somehow to, to ghosts and to spirits and to angels. Uh, they claim that they're able to communicate with them, that they've got a line to the dead, if you will. Uh, so they can contact people, it's hyper-dimensional, they can contact people across planes and dimensions. Uh, and so this stems from the spiritualism movement, uh, so this goes back to the mid-19th mid century, so I'm sure you've all heard about the Fox sisters. Uh, and so towards the end of their lives, one of the sisters revealed or so exposed that uh, it was actually a hoax, everything that they did, and uh, all of the the same answers were just tricks and they were uh, wrapping their knuckles and, and doing all sorts of things like that. So really in many ways the whole foundation for this is, is false and um, so people forget that. Uh, so mediums have got all kinds of performance techniques. Uh, some of them will believe that they're possessed somehow by a spirit or they channel, they're a conduit of some kind uh, for the spirits. Uh, and some use little tools like automatic writing, so a spirit writes through them and they can um, send messages from another plane. Uh, and so some go into a train, like Edgar Casey, you might have heard of him, he's a very famous uh, psychic going back about 100 years ago. And then we've got the contemporary mediums uh, like James Van Fogg and uh, John Edwards, and so they're able to interact as I am now on stage um, and do these things real time without going into a trance at all. So we've got clear points, and this is another term for clear vision, so you might have heard of um, the phrase second sight. So these people claim that they can see visions and pictures in real time or in dreams, uh, and a specific kind would be remote viewers if you've heard of, of them before, and uh, so it's like astral projection, they claim that they can be, they can bilocate, so they can be in two places at once, or they can, I could be here now and see what someone's doing in San Antonio, Texas. 